Well, this should be fun, because today we're getting fancy. Oh yeah, you're going to want to see this one, so stick around. So as you can see from the thing down there, uh, we're making uh, the New Orleans uh, barbecue shrimp. Uh, it does not go on the barbecue. Uh, it does come from New Orleans though. So they at least got part of that right. And it does have shrimp in it. So two out of three ain't bad. Uh, why they call it barbecue shrimp, I have absolutely no idea. I've tried to look that up, it makes no sense. I don't know, maybe because it's spicy and uh, people back then were dumb. Doesn't matter, it's delicious. Um, one thing about this is that there are about a hundred different recipes for uh, Nolan's barbecue shrimp and there's uh, at least three or four different ways to uh, pronounce it. Uh, I am uh, using a recipe that is not entirely unique. I will confess it is uh, mostly inspired by Emerald Lagasse's uh, barbecue shrimp and I've had that uh, a few different ways and a few different things. It does not contain beer, uh, it has wine in it, so it's a little fancier. I don't really understand the original recipe from this, uh, to be honest with you. It was like butter, beer, and cayenne pepper. And you're like, and then they put it in the oven. That's a little weird. Uh, I've never tried it that way um, because this way is awesome. This way has a lot of Worcestershire in it, as you will see. But uh, it has a few other things that are uh, exciting and uh, wonderful. And uh, let's just get started because uh, it ain't going to cook itself, folks. Let's go. So let's get started with the sauce. Now it's onions and garlic and Worcestershire and tomato juice and butter and apple cider vinegar and apple juice and we've got our Creole seasoning sitting over there, which of course the recipe for that is in the description. And it all starts with some butter in the pan to start doing the onions. To that butter, we add about a tablespoon of olive oil, roughly. I didn't really count or measure, but eh, just give it a good coating in the pan. Now, the onions go in. We're not looking to fully caramelize these. We're just sauteing them. Uh, been a couple of minutes uh, in the pan, and now the garlic goes in. And then uh, we put a little bit, tablespoon of the uh, Creole seasoning on top of that. And uh, we're going to mix that all together really, really well and kind of uh, cook that with the seasoning so that we perfume it a bit. Now let's start putting the liquids in because this is all about the liquids. The Worcestershire goes in now. And if you've never tried to uh, cook Worcestershire sauce like this, Worcestershire sauce, um, be prepared for the smells. That's interesting. All right, so we got shrimp stock going in now. Uh, I'm putting, starting with a cup of that, but it uh, is going to take more. Uh, and we're going to put some wine in here, just a white wine. Uh, and we uh, won't say who uh, made the wine because, you know, that's a thing, apparently. Um, and we got our uh, tomato juice in here. And we got all of our yummy goodness going in, all our flavors. Now, there's a lot of acid on the front end of this. We're cooking this all down quite a bit. You can see it's already thickened a little bit. We have one Roma tomato that we've sectioned into eight different pieces, and we have half a lemon that we've quartered half a lemon. So I guess they're eight size pieces as well. Uh, for this, we're only doing a pound of shrimp. You don't need a full lemon. Um, but if you're doing more, you're going to put more ingredients and you're going to use a whole lemon. But yeah, just uh, squish the, the lemon a little bit to release a little juice. This is going to cook down quite a ways, and this is all going to be mush basically by the time we're ready to eat so you know that's just the way that goes uh that's uh how the sauce works we're just going to keep cooking and reducing and reducing and reducing this takes a while every couple of minutes come back give it a stir but you're going to just keep reducing this for a very long time uh, probably 20 to 25 minutes uh, when it gets down a little bit, we haven't put anything sweet in here yet. We're just going to sample to see what the heat is like. Well, it needs a little more heat, so I'm putting some red pepper flake in. Uh, it's not in the ingredients list, but I didn't think I had quite enough heat, so I just added a little of that. You know, uh, you can do whatever you want. It's your sauce. I, this is my sauce. I did what I want. There you go. So uh, red pepper flake is a great way to add a little bit of heat if you feel like it. 
As you can see, this is really reducing down a lot now. We put a ton of liquid in here and we're getting nice trails as we put the spatula through. You can see it's taken a minute to roll back over. This is about where we want it. So we're going to add our apple juice at this point. This is the only sweetening element. Look at that. It coats the back of the spoon perfectly. You know it's getting thick and rich. So turn the heat off. We're adding some heavy cream to this. And we're going to finish it up with a little bit of butter after we mix this around. This kind of mellows out the acids a little bit with the, uh, with the cream. And it makes a really, really lovely, rich sauce that just is so good. If you've never had barbecue shrimp, oh my god. Seriously. All right. So the next trick is the finishing butter. The heat has been off. It is no longer cooking, but it is still pretty warm. So you put a tablespoon of butter in here and just kind of make it that wonderful silky mouthfeel that everyone loves so much. Just uh, mix this up uh, pretty good and uh, the sauce is done. Let it sit. Let's get started with the shrimp. We got a pound of shrimp here, and uh, I always put a, a piece of uh, cellophane down on top of the ice to keep them separated because you don't want wet shrimp. So uh, that is a nice handy way to keep those separated so that you can uh, easily move along. After you pounded it dry, put your Creole seasoning on top of this. You just want to coat it. You don't want it super thick and heavy, but we're going to cook these off in the pan here in our cast iron pan. It's kind of important that it's a cast iron pan because this is also our serving dish. So we put a tablespoon of butter in there and a tablespoon of oil. As soon as that's hot and melted in the whole thing, the shrimp goes in. I have just enough room in this pan for this number of shrimp. This is a pound of shrimp right here. There's 16, 20s, I believe. And uh, it fits just barely. Okay, we don't overcook the crap out of these. We cook them for about a minute and a half, two minutes on the first side. And about the same on the second side. They're just getting cooked through. We're going to pour the sauce on top of this in a second. So you don't want to overcook the shrimp right now. Otherwise, you get rubbery shrimp. Don't do that. That's bad. And now for the big moment, saucing the shrimp. Now, this is... Oh, so good. So amazing. That sauce is so incredible. Please don't waste a drop of this. As you can see, I'm working uh, very hard to make sure that every little piece of usable sauce makes it into that pan. That is important. Uh, we're using the cast iron pan here because it retains heat. As you can see, it's still bubbling even though the burner is already off. So that, that is important because this is the serving bowl as well, the serving container. You put this in the center of the table and everybody eats out of it. That uh, is kind of a fun little thing. It works great as an appetizer or an entree. So that is the world's fastest uh, Nolan's barbecue shrimp. Um, seriously, this was a three hour recipe. I have knocked it down to 30 minutes. Everybody can do this. You saw how it's done. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Um, and it is friggin' amazing. Uh, to prove that, I'm actually gonna eat some of it because I almost never eat on camera. Don't know why, I'm weird, but I gotta eat this. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. The Worcestershire and everything else becomes this sweet, incredible flavor that you've never had before. You don't know it's Worcestershire sauce, you don't. It's a sweet, tart, sort of amazing, it tastes like barbecue sauce. I guess that's why they came up with the name. The only thing it needs now is some bread to dip in to soak up all the lovely goodness. A little bit of green onion over the top to make it look festive. That's enough. Don't need it all. And uh, I like to serve this with a little bit of rice too because the rice will soak up that sauce. That sauce is, I won't say the, uh, the word, uh, the M word that uh, somebody with the spiky white hair likes to say. Um, but that is incredible sauce. You will want to put that on everything. If you make this as an, as an appetizer, people are going to keep the sauce to put on veggies, put on absolutely anything. And it is that incredible. You can have fun with this. Uh, but yeah, that's basically your Nolan's barbecue shrimp. See if I can pick this up. The skillet here is hot. The reason to keep it in the skillet is that it stays here and it stays hot. Cast iron is wonderful for that. Here, are you getting a good shot of that? You getting, you getting a look at that? All right. 
So the only thing you have to ask yourself is how fast can you get to the store to get this? Because as you saw, this meal is only like 30 something minutes away from uh, getting started. So if I were you, I'd start now. So uh, well, thanks for staying to the end. I uh, appreciate that at least. Uh, before you click off, just hit that uh, thumbs up thing if you, because <laughs> this is amazing. And uh, I'll keep making this stuff. You keep watching and I'll see you back here in the next one. Thanks. Bye.